so I guess we can go on to the story. So, uh, <clears throat> speaking of movies, there's a movie out called Bros, I guess. And um, and the reason why I want to bring this up is because um, I I think it's important towards media and how media portrays things that are supposed to. Um, you're supposed to try to as a person who try who's trying to reach out to the general audience you try your best not to alienate your audience right but anyways let's go ahead and read this billy eckner blames straight people for this dismal opening of gay rom-com bros so um uh billy eckner complained that straight people just didn't show up to his gay a new gay romantic comedy after it bombed the box office i believe it only made like five million dollars which is really really bad yeah yeah this is coming up on my youtube uh youtube uh algorithm too yeah so bros which was produced by judd uh judd apatow and reportedly costed 20 uh, cost 22 million dollars to make garnered buzz for being the first gay romantic comedy in a major studio just brought in pol a poultry 4.8 million since its release on friday okay so the thing is that you gotta still put in that majority of these big cities um, majority of these big cities such as Los Angeles and New York, which is like the capital of like majority of where you're oh and probably San Francisco, a lot of them are still sort of semi lockdown. So you know, but uh <clears throat> let's go. I I I don't know. I, so he's so so this person is blaming straight people. Um I don't know too much about this, but I do want to continue reading this. Eckner, who is uh who is the lead Whose movie's lead star and co-writer, a co-writer, took to Twitter to express his disappointment over the dire numbers with a controversial take and quickly garnered backlash. Last night, I sn I snuck in and sat in the back of a sold-out theater playing Bros in L.A. The audience howled in with laughter, start to finish, burst into applause at the end, and some were wiping away tears as they walked out. I was truly, it was a truly magical, uh, truly magical. Uh, really, I'm very proud of this moment. 44 year old. Uh, yeah, so there, there you go. What's what? Why is he blaming straight people again? Yeah, I used to go to theater often. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I wouldn't go to a straight rom-com uh, in theaters either. So, yeah. so here's the thing. Majority of these uh, rom-coms, romantic comedies, right, are actually um, we don't go to those as 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 males in general. Well, especially, you know, uh, you know, straight male. Um, I don't go to ro romantic comedies. Um, I usually get dragged into it by my ex-girlfriend or or some or you know, usually my ex-girlfriend, right? My, my 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 wife is not a big fan of romantic comedies either, so <clears throat> so I wouldn't go to this whether if it's straight or gay. I, I mean, there's a lot of homophobia which sucks and it's true about kind of weird uh, co uh, to correlate that to this, yeah. So yeah, so so, so here's the thing, I I, I know that. We are trying to normalize, um, what's it called again? Uh, like the stuff that's happening inside the LGBTQ community, right? We're trying to normalize gay, lesbians, uh, uh, queer, trans, uh, trans folks. Um, same thing with um, bisexual and stuff like that, right? We're, we're, we're trying to. It's all over the media, right? You have um, what's it called? Uh, uh, America Chavez's parents are are a lesbian couple, right? Uh, Orange is the new black is literally all all of it is literally lesbians and that was critically acclaimed. So <clears throat> I maybe I, I I don't know, but yeah, there, 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 there are a lot of people who, who just don't watch rom coms. I, I think it's I think you have to say it's rom coms in general. Um, if it's such a funny, funny movie, such a breakthrough hit, then I, I don't see why. And I believe. Ron Tomatoes, this, this, this thing is at like 90, 90%, 90% or something like that, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, all right. Ron Tomatoes. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, bros. Where, where is it? Where is it? Uh, bros. There it is. There. See? 90%, 90%. Right? This movie's, the movie's amazing, right? It's supposed to be amazing. Yeah, I think the rom cover is not what it used to be compared to one, two decades ago. Yeah. I... I, I just think it's just where we are. I would say if this movie came out three years ago, 2019, 2018, I'm pretty sure this movie would probably make like $50 million. Maybe. I don't know. Let's continue reading. Uh, Rolling Stones already has a bros at the list of the best comedies of the 21st century. 
Uh, what's also true is that the one point in the theater chain called Universal, uh, the studio behind the movie, said that they were willing to pull the trailer because of the gay content. Universal convinced them not to. America, fuck yeah, etc., etc. Eckner then declared that it's just the world we live in. Unfortunately, even with glowing reviews, great Rotten Tomato scores, a an A Cinema score, etc., straight people, especially in certain parts of the country, just didn't show up for bros, and that's a disappointing. Uh, is uh, but it is what it is. Yeah, uh, unfortunate, unfortunate. Yeah, too many. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's also there's also too many uh, TV inter uh, many entertainment content now. Too many movies, TV series, anime, video games compared to back then. You got to pick your battles. Yeah, exactly. So, would you rather go watch this movie, or would you rather go watch Barbarians or Smile, which is a horror movie, and it's 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 October. It's sort of like that. <clears throat> I don't even watch 100% of the stuff the streaming service. Yeah, it's just, it's just so many. Yeah, there's way too many. There's way too many uh, entertainment to consume, right? And you got to pick and choose what is worth your time. I don't care if this movie is like fucking a masterpiece beating like the Shawshank Redemption in like it's that that's so good that it's going to win all the Oscars and stuff like that. I'm not going to watch it. Not because I'm I don't. You know, I'm a, a straight male and stuff like that, 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 that I'm not going to watch this. No, it's because I have all these other backlog stuff that I still need to watch. It's like, I didn't even watch Better Call Saul yet. I need to finish that. So I only have so many hours during the day. I'm working, you know, I'm working. I have, I, 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 I you know, I have my own life to do and uh, my own life to deal with. You know, I'm having a kid and if it's happening to me, it's probably happening to millions of people around the world. Right. Let's say, especially here in America. So I would say if every single person in the U.S. was gay, I don't think this movie would have would have made that much money anyways. It's just based off the circumstance that we are in. So uh, the fact that he's totally just saying that oh, straight people don't like like gay movies. I don't think that I think it's completely disingenuous. I haven't even watched The Mandalorian. Exactly. Man and that Mandalorian's fucking, you know, fucking baby Yoda and shit. Yeah, uh, this whole thing with the sub subsurfaces is actually, uh, uh, people actually get burnt out just by somebody looking at a movie. Yeah, and, and look, movies are not cheap, right? It's still about $15 to go watch a movie. And I'm already paying like, what, $20 for Netflix and uh, fucking all these other streaming for services that's combined that's like, like $50, $50 $60 a month and stuff like that. The fact that he's straight up saying, oh, it's because straight males don't like watching this movie. I or straight heterosexual people don't like watching this movie. I think that's completely disingenuous. Yeah, pop, yeah, popcorn. Yeah, you, when you have popcorn, if you got popcorn, you're eating it, watching the movie, your mouth is going to fucking get dry. You're going to get another soda. How much is a soda? Fucking $8. You haven't watched season two, but I'm digging uh, and or more. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, what's going on, Lion? How's it going, man? Yeah, so. So, like, going to movie theaters, you have uh, 20. Uh, what's it called again? uh $15 for a movie ticket right $15 and then you want soda soda is like $7 a large bucket of popcorn is fucking um it's fucking uh what's it called again um fucking another $8 that's already 25 bucks and that's majority of the time people do not go to the movie theaters by themselves they go with people so let's say especially if you're a couple now we're talking about romantic comedy here right so let's talk about a regular ro romantic comedy. Uh, I don't know, fucking, what's a good romantic comedy? Uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall, right? That's a romantic comedy, right? And um, <clears throat> we have that. I, I remember for, uh, I'm, I, okay, here's the thing. I've never watched Forgetting Sarah Marshall. As you can tell, I'm not a big rom-com guy. I don't care how good the fucking movie is. I never watched it. <laughs> but I know that movie is really, really good, right? I haven't even watched it and then if and let's say if i'm like oh let's go on a date or my ex is like or my girlfriend or my or my wife whoever i'm with let's go on a date that's about a 30 dollar date right dirty no 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 more than that about like 35 dollars 38 dollars depending you know oh i want popcorn i want hot dogs i want fucking soda and you no know, you no know, fucking candy and shit like that that's gonna be a 40 dollar date okay and that, that's an already on top of all the shit that I'm already paying for. So here's the thing. I'm not going to go watch this by myself. I don't think I ever will. Same thing with any romantic comedy. I will never actually purposely go watch romantic comedies by myself. But yeah. So uh, let's go and continue this, okay? Eckner subsequently implored that 
everyone who isn't homophobic weirdo go to the cinema and see bros as soon as possible okay here's the thing now here's the thing. i did not read this part <clears throat> i did not know this part before i said all this shit. the fact that he said everyone who isn't a homophobic weirdo go see my movie as soon as possible boom you're alienating your fucking audience right away right i'm not sure i'm not sure what the percentage population is for people who are actually gay lesbian you know part of the lgbtq in in the us i'm not sure how many percentage let's say 10 10 percent. so that means okay that means you're calling out 90 percent of the population a homophobic weirdo as an investor i would tell you to keep your mouth shut okay as a, poor, a person who just likes money i was like do not alienate your 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 fan base okay you say if you don't come watch my movie it's because you're a homophobe why would you ever say that yeah, why do they always do this? It's so bad for business. Yeah, exactly. Why would you why would you say that? It's such it's it's such a bad take. It's like why would you alienate your like 90 80% to 90% of the population who are heterosexual? It's so bad. However, the comedian was quickly blasted by gay and straight Twitter's users alike, many of whom accused of him shaming people for not seeing his film. Seeing my movie or you're a homophobe. Exactly. Is a hell of a marketing pitch. One stunned person responded. One gay creator hit back with Eckner declaring, Bros bombing at the box office is a failure of ego. Billy Eckner is a B-list star, not a leading man. And nobody is going to the theaters to watch a random rom-com in the 2020. For Billy to assume it would be a blockbuster just because he's gay and funny, quote unquote, is purely Hollywood narcissism. Exactly. Okay. Let's say if this movie, uh, let, let's say if Billy Eckner, uh, Billy Eckner's partner in this movie was, and they called him John Cena, right? Okay, let's say if he was literally doing like John Cena stuff, The Rock, The Rock was in this, um, like, uh, what's it called again? Uh, fucking um, uh, Chris Hemsworth or someone big, someone big, big, really, really big. Like, then I can see this pulling in a little bit more. But thing is, I, I didn't even know what this movie existed until today. What is happening? Like, I have no idea this movie exists until today. So, here's the thing. The last movie that I went to go watch that is a romantic comedy is because uh, my wife's, uh, our friend, uh, what's it called again? Uh, our friend um, told us to go watch Trainwreck. It's because it's really good. Okay. Here's the thing. I watched the ha first half of the movie and I fell asleep the rest of the movie. Because I didn't really, I, I had no idea who uh, Amy Schumer was. I knew who Bill uh, Bill Hader is, right? I know who Bill Hader is. Um, the parts with um, LeBron James was funny. And uh, what's it called again? Uh, John Cena was great in that movie. But I don't, I only, only watched half of the movie. That's the last romantic comedy I went to. And the thing is that do I don't intend to go watch any other romantic comedies that are out in theaters. But the fact that this person who I have no idea existed saying that if you don't watch my movie, you're a homophobe. This is this is not good. This is not good. It does not look good for you. And the fact that your movie in the second weekend that's coming up the second weekend, this thing is going to have probably one million dollars. You're not even going to break even. Right. $22 million to make this. It made $5 million back. The only way that I can see this is maybe this, uh, this publicity maybe gets it better. I'm not sure. Maybe this gets better publicity, but this is not, this is not good. Yeah. It's just, uh, people are like, Hey, you, you better watch this movie or else. But man, I feel bad for him, but not really because he did this to himself. Uh, many added that the other films about gay men, including The Birdcage and Brokeback Mountain, performed strongly at the box offices and insisted Bro simply didn't look that enjoyable. So here's the thing. Broke, I don't know what Birdcage is, but Brokeback Mountain, that movie was mean to hell and back. But the thing is that you have star power, okay? You had uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, 
which during that time was really big. And then you have Heath Ledger. May he rest in peace. Right? And then I, I've even had people who actually use broke back as a um as a verb. Hey, they, you, hey, you you broke backing right now? I'm like, what are you talking about? What's broke back? And then I found out what it was. It's a movie about, you know, these guys, these cowboys and stuff like that. So, but you like I have I don't know who this guy is. Uh, earlier this year, Eckner described Hollywood as homophobic. Hollywood is not homophobic. Okay. Hollywood is not. Hollywood is very accepting. A lot, a, a lot of these progressive places, a lot of these people who who are living in like Los Angeles, New York, uh, fl Florida, um, parts of Florida like Miami, um, what's it called again? Places in places in Houston and especially San Francisco and uh, Portland. They're all re really progressive. But the thing is that things are getting normalized. So uh, Hollywood has often been very accepting on the surface, but very, but very homophobic underneath. I don't think that is, I don't think that's the case. Um, <clears throat> I think times have changed. Times have changed, especially in 2020. A lot of things have changed. So it's Hollywood. Straight are people are people in America. Yeah, throwing blame left and right. Yeah, it's who, who is it? Is it is it the people? Is it your general audience who you're saying are quote unquote homophobic, or is it Hollywood? Are you attacking your own people now? It's like what's going on, right? You're exactly right. Uh, but very homophobic underneath the surface is very uh, hypercritical. Uh, and a lot of decisions have been made based on fear. Fears that I think that are often irrational. And yet, people were scared. You know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of it is, was based around that they think that the mainstream audience would, would or would not accept. And it's pretty infuriating when you think about it. So here's the thing. I think that if this movie came out in 2018 2019 not in the because right now we are post pandemic right we are post covid right now we're sort of getting better joe biden said the pandemic is over okay so everything is sort of like i'm assuming in 2023 things are going to get better slowly uh, at least i hope if this movie came out prior to that maybe way later who knows but if this movie came out before the pandemic started, came out before COVID. This movie would probably made a lot of money. Okay. But the thing is that <clears throat> you said subsequently, I'm not sure when he said this. Everyone who isn't homo a homophobic weirdo, go watch my movie. If you didn't say this, I would say you were probably gotten a couple more million people watching it. Maybe. I don't know. But the reason why I brought this up is because this also has to do with Elizabeth Banks' regrets making Charlie's Angel a feminist man manifesto. Okay, she basically said that this movie is not for men. This movie is for women, for women power, and it's not for you. And if you don't like it, don't come see my movie. And exactly same thing that happened to her. Now, the fact that she said that regrets. Was it get woke, go broke. Do not do this. Okay, do not alienate your audience. Okay, if you want money and you like money, do not do what these people are doing. I don't, I don't know why they do it. It's like, 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 so, like, it's very, very bad for business. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Banks has opened up about the box office, box office failure of Charlie's Angels and noted that a Hollywood double standard that, and that she was up against as a female director. No, no, I, I don't like when they do this. Okay. <clears throat> Let's not bring in Patty Jenkins. Okay, let's not let's not bring in Patty Jenkins. It's because she has um, Wonder Woman. Because Wonder Woman is a mar it's a it's a what's it called again? A superhero film. You got to think about things are a little bit different. Um, I believe uh, I'm I'm not sure who directed Trainwreck. That movie was entertaining for what I for, for what I've seen. Um, <clears throat> uh, but the thing is that I think that she you're not she's not accepting the merits of her own failure saying that if you if you don't like if you don't like um you know my movie then don't come watch it right like you can always have that and then that's cool but don't describe me when it happens exactly like don't it's like hey i know what i said i fucked up it's my fault right and sort of right now uh how man elizabeth, elizabeth banks what are you doing the hunger game stars opened up about directing the 2019 reboot and revealed her regrets about the film's feminist marketing, explaining that she simply wanted to make a straightforward action movie. <sighs> According to what I heard, the movie sucked. I don't think it was good at all. There was a story around Charlie's Angels that I was creating 
uh, some feminist uh, manifesto, Banks said in an interview in the New York Times. Just making an, I was just making an action movie. She continued, I would have liked to have made a Mission Impossible, but women aren't directing Mission Impossible. Uh, I think if you showed your chops that you can direct, uh, I think you would have gotten a chance to do it. But I'm not sure if this is your like official like directorial debut, but uh, I think as a, as a, as right now uh, you're you're sort of just making up excuses, right? Don't don't let that stop you. You shouldn't let that stop you. Make you don't have to make you don't have to direct Mission Impossible. Make your own Mission Impossible, okay? Don't 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 try to piggyback what's already successful and try to come up with your own successful thing, okay? Uh, I was able to direct an action movie, frankly, because it was start a starred woman and uh, I'm a female director, and that's that is what the confine right now is in Hollywood. Uh, no, it's not. I think you're. I, I I think you think that. I believe you have enough credibility and star power for you to actually get what you want. I would say just make a good script, have good script writers, direct a good movie. That's it. All right. You don't. A char, you're you're thinking of the fact that Charlie's Angels is a it's a well known franchise, and I'm gonna use it to make a new one, which which I'm gonna also say that if you're if you don't come watch my movie, then you're a sexist. Why did Top Gun Maverick do so well? Pure entertainment and escapism. Why would anyone want to be doused with a political ideology and pay for it at the same time? I think we are slowly starting to come out of this sludge in movies, but there are a lot of people who are trying to still push it. Exactly. Exactly. And if it does not do well, they're going to blame it on the people who who didn't go. Because she actually said, this movie is not made for you. Don't come watch my movie, men. Only women come. All right. Here's the thing, though. <clears throat> a lot of these... Uh, I remember back in the day, I, I heard how they make they, they, they determine the demographics of if the movie would do good or not. I believe it's males aging between 18 and like 35. That's the demographic. And how did they know that like Iron Man or these movies, these action movies would do good? It's because they would do screenings. Like sort of like uh secret like secret screenings or something like that. Like pre-screenings to, to get the gist of what people thought. And what what do and what do a lot of people in that time uh, in that age gap will usually have? Maybe a significant other, right? May it be girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, right? So they will bring their significant others to go watch said action movie, and then the action movie does really really well. For instance, I'm one of those assholes. Okay. Um, in two, in, I remember in 2007, I was like, oh my god, Iron Man looks fucking good. Iron Man is gonna be the fucking tits. It's gonna be the bays knees. Is gonna be the dingus to my penis and and then i'm like i'm gonna go watch it do what my girlfriend said during that time you're gonna go watch that movie by yourself i'm not going with you that movie looks boring i'm not interested in that movie i'm like okay and then every time <clears throat> and every time um what's it called again i saw a trailer i'm like oh, okay, i can't go watch the movie they finished god of wars so yeah yeah I, I finished it last stream i was able to finish it last stream i i i, I think i think i did like a six hour stream last time i was able to finish it but uh, going back to the story um she was like, no, I'm not going to go watch this Marvel movie. I'm not going to go watch um, uh, Iron Man. It's going to be stupid. And then when the movie came out, I'm like, I'm going to go watch the movie with or without you. Right? With or without you. And then she's like, okay, I'm coming. I'm going to come. Uh, I. Right? <clears throat> you know what happened? She was like, this movie's good. Let's go watch the next one. What's the next Marvel movie? Oh my god, this is so good. The Avengers Initiative? Same thing with uh, The Dark Knight. I watched, I'm pretty sure I watched that. I dragged her to go watch that movie and then she's like, oh my god, this movie is so good. Right? So that that's the demographic. And if you're saying, and, it, and if I was Elizabeth Banks saying that, hey, if you're a man, don't come watch my movie because it's not made for you. And if you, and, and, and if you don't come, then you're sexist. Why would you do that? I keep missing the uh, finale, gosh darn it. Yeah, no, no worries, man. You go, uh, it's sorry sorry no but yeah um <clears throat> all right so uh banks went on to say that she wishes the movie had not been presented as just for girls because i didn't make it just for girls but the, why did you say why did you alienate your your audience there was a disconnect on the market side of it for me the film suffered a poor opening weekend that only made eight million dollars according to box office Following the box office flop, Banks took to Twitter and said she was proud of the film. 
I think women are allowed to have one or two franchises every 17 years. I feel totally fine with that. Don't don't let your dreams be dreams in Lucas Bank. Just go out there and make good shit. Stop complaining. There is there is no just just do it. Don't don't just go do it. Stop complaining and prove us wrong. If you're saying that you can make something good, prove us wrong. Right? And and do not alienate your your audience. Say like that's exactly what Tim Miller did. He said that, "Oh, um uh what's it called again? Uh, Terminator Dark Fate is gonna blow the dicks off of fucking, you know, woman haters and shit. And then basically saying that this movie is not for you. All right. What happened? Movie bombed. All right. Call, do not, do not uh, call out your fans. Okay. Especially, especially Terminator. Like some, something like that. Same thing with Charlie's Angels. <clears throat> Despite her issues with the project, Banks praised Kristen Stewart's performance in the film, saying, Let me say I'm proud of the movie. I love Kristen Stewart being funny and light. I loved introducing Ella Belinska to the world. I love working with Patrick Stewart. It was an incredible experience. Patrick Stewart is in that movie? Yeah. On the filmmaking in general, Banks said that her priority was to entertain the masses, not to push any sort of agenda. I'm just going to try to make a living trying to entertain people. I don't deny that my choices feed my personal beliefs a system. What I do uh, not want to be presented as is some sort of feminist warrior like woo ha. I'm fighting for the system all the time. Uh, you're saying that, but I think your actions completely counter what you are, what you are basically saying. Um, but yeah, uh, there are very few female directors in Hollywood. Uh, there are even fewer who are actresses who have become directors. I've, uh, I've, I'm pretty sure this is fucking. Yo, I'm, I've dicking work my dick off <laughs> to be able to do what I'm doing, she said. I'm putting my head down and showing these big corporations that if they give a woman opportunity to do the job, they can make a good product that can make them a profit. It's a male dominated industry that I do not, I do not, uh, disagree with. I, I, I believe, uh, Hollywood is definitely male dominated, but it's changing, right? You get just like a gal <laughs> who's making, <laughs> who's doing she hulk <laughs> <laughs> Fucking she hook. <laughs> and then you get Patty Jenkins that did um what's it called again? Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 1980 fucking four or some shit like that. 1989, whatever. That movie sucked. And then you get uh Catherine Catherine Heigl. Uh I'm not sure if she's directing anything. I'm not sure if she's actually re even relevant. I'm pretty sure she should probably direct a couple episodes of Grey's Anatomy. And same thing with uh what's it called again? A bunch of I, I I'm pretty sure there is good stuff out there. I think you, it's it's very niche, right? And then you have uh, what's it called again? Uh, uh, the people uh, who made uh, Eternals, even though that 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 didn't do good. Uh, <clears throat> that's what I'm up against. I can't solve it, and I don't really want to analyze it. Uh, it's not interesting to me. Banks' next project is the Cocaine Bear, which is set to re release February 2023. Okay. With all this said and done, with the whole thing with Billy e uh, Eichner saying that um, everyone who isn't homophobic weirdo, if you go, uh, if, if you're not, if if you don't want to be homophobic, go watch my movie. And then he said that if, if people, if, if you don't, if you don't come see my movie, then you're a sexist and you're bigoted, misogynistic. All, all, all these words, you know, that does not help you. Okay, we're looking at as black and white. Okay, as a person who is a, if you are a Hollywood investor, right? If you're a Hollywood investor. And all you all, all you're thinking about is money, right? All like, yo, I just want money. I don't fucking care. How much money does it take to make this movie? Twenty five million dollars. Okay. How much? And then I'm assuming another 20, 25 million dollars for advertisement, right? And promotion stuff. So that means you need to make at least fifty million dollars to break even. This movie, uh, Billy Eichner's movie, made five. Okay, it cost $22 million to make. That means that it took $44 million to do everything. That means that the movie is not going to do well. The I it, it, it could potentially do well maybe if it goes to, goes to Netflix. I don't know. But who knows? But it, that, that's just my two cents. You know, like, use, don't bash your fans. Do not alienate your fans. I think, you, I think you'll be fine. But if, if, this is, if this is the case moving forward, hopefully we get... Like, like what you said, Lion, I, ho I, ho I hope everything just gets better. 
right everything gets better we get out of these things we're trying to push agendas put uh push propaganda and stuff like that that, that that's completely like awful that 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 alienates the fans and stuff like that hopefully i i remember what's it called again w like one of one of the guys that worked on um eternals literally said this movies is going to save lives okay and i have no idea what that meant how's how is a movie going to save lives is, is it because you're gonna have a a gay person in marvel it's not the first time maybe in the mcu but this is not the first time we had someone someone openly gay in marvel right you have fucking negas negasonic teenage warhead and everyone fucking loved her i fucking love her she's awesome hey wade like Nigga Sonic Teenage Warhead is fucking amazing.